Hello everybody! In this clip we introduce lattice cones and lattice fans. First of all, what is a lattice? A lattice is a Z module and isomorphic to some Z to the N. So a lattice is just a finitely generated torsion-free Z module. The rational vector space associated with the lattice N is Q tensor N. So in case N is isomorphic to Z to the N, Q tensor N is isomorphic to Q to the N. What do we mean by a cone in a finitely generated rational vector space? A cone is a subset of the following form. Take finitely many vectors v1 to vr in v and look at the set of all non-negative linear combinations over the vectors v1 to vr. We call this set the cone generated by v1 to vr. If our v is of the form nq, so the rational vector space associated with the lattice n, then we call the pair sigma n also a lattice cone and we say that sigma is a cone in the lattice n. Let us see an example. A lattice cone in Z2. Look at the vectors v1 equal 1, 1. v2 equal 1, 2. Then in the cone sigma over v1, v2 is just this set here. Here's an important fact. A subset sigma of a finitely generated rational vector space is a cone in our sense, if and only if we can describe it by means of finitely many linear forms. Concretely, that means that there are linear forms u1 up to us in the dual space, such that our sigma consists precisely of the vectors v on which all the linear forms evaluate non-negativity. So we have two possible ways to characterize our cones. The one is sigma is generated by finitely many vectors. The other is sigma is described by finitely many linear forms. If we are in this situation, then these describing linear forms generate the dual cone. The dual cone consists by definition of all elements u in the dual space which evaluate non-negatively along the whole sigma. Let us look at an example. Consider the cone sigma generated by the vectors v1 and v2, v1, v2, so this cone. We want to describe sigma by means of linear forms. The idea is to regard sigma as an intersection of two half spaces. Firstly, the half space having this as a bounding line extending into this direction. Secondly, the half space having that one as a bounding line extending into that direction. Now, we look for a linear form which vanishes along this bounding line and evaluates it non-negatively in that direction. That means it has to live somewhere on the ray perpendicular to this line and lie in this area here, so it can maybe be this U1. Similar for the other one, the linear form has to vanish on that line so it lies on the ray perpendicular to that and somewhere in this area here, so this is U2. And then the statement says that the dual cone sigma dual is generated by the two linear forms U1 and U2. We need the concept of a face of a cone. So consider a cone sigma in a rational vector space V. A subset tau is called a face if it is cut out by a linear form coming from the dual cone. That means there must be a u in the dual cone such that our sigma is 
the perpendicular space of U intersected with sigma, meaning that tau consists of all the elements of sigma such that U evaluates to zero on V. The cone sigma is called pointed if it has a zero cone as a face. Let us look at an example. Consider a cone sigma generated by two vectors in Q2, so this cone here. We want to determine all the faces of the cone sigma. The first one is sigma itself. It is cut out by the zero form. So a cone is always a face of itself. Intuitively it is clear that there are two more faces, two one-dimensional faces, namely these bounding rays, row 1 and row 2. How to obtain them? Look at row 1. We need a linear form which vanishes along row and is non-negative in this area, so this is one of the generators of the dual cone, take U1. Similar, we proceed with U2, and the zero cone in this case is also a phase of sigma. What can we do? We need a describing linear form standing from the interior, which is non-negative on the whole sigma, but vanishes only in the point zero. Then we can take any general element of the dual cone. So in particular our sigma is a pointed cone. This need not be the case in general. Here's an example of a non-pointed cone. Look at the cone generated by the first canonical basis vector E1, the second E2, and then minus E1. So we get the upper half space. And there's no chance to cut out the point zero by a linear form. Such a linear form always will vanish on the whole line. We are ready for the concept of a fan in a rational vector space. So let V be a finite dimensional rational vector space. A fan in V is a finite set, big sigma, of pointed cones in V, such that whenever I have an element of big sigma, then also all the faces of this element belong to sigma. Whenever I have two cones inside sigma, then the intersection of these two cones is a face of each of these cones. If the vector space V is a rational vector space associated with the lattice N, then we call the pair sigma N a lattice fan or speak of sigma as a fan in the lattice N. Let us have a look at an example. Consider the canonical basis vectors E1, E2 and Z2 and set E0 to be minus E1, minus E2, that means a vector minus 1, minus 1, then we obtain a fan sigma in Z2 by taking the following cones. Sigma 0 is the cone generated by E1, E2. Sigma 1 is the cone generated by E2, E0. Sigma 2 is the cone generated by E0, E1. These are the maximal cones of our fan, and now we just have to add all the faces of them. That means the rays, row 1, row 2, row 0, and the 0 cone. If we proceed like this, we directly see that the cones intersect nicely in common faces, so we have a fan in Z2. See you in the next clip.